Up next, we have uh, Paratosh Mikazi, who will be talking with us about solving differential equations in Mathematica. Thank you, Dan. Okay, so today I want to talk about how we use um, the, uh, a framework in order to solve different kind of differential equations in Mathematica. So the topics I want to focus on today is basically give you an uh, overview of the framework that Mathematica internally uses um, and provide you a number of examples for, um, for the various kind of problems that can be solved within this framework and finally give you um, uh, a list of resources where you can go and get a lot more information because I might not be able to cover everything. Uh, the framework which uh, Mathematica uses internally to solve differential equations is called the Andy Solve framework. Uh, ND solve in itself means it's a numerical differential equation solver and within the single framework you have you can solve a vast number of problems so you can solve ordinary differential equations partial differential equations boundary value problem delay differential equations hybrid systems differential algebraic equations and uh, parametric differential equations and uh, and various combinations of such uh, and I'll show you examples uh, I'll try to touch on uh, uh, several of these different types of problems one of the things that is remarkable is that ND solves output after it solves a differential equation is not just uh, a number of points uh, that you get, but rather the output comes in the form of an interpolating function. So you can take that information and then perform uh, more calculus and more uh, analysis from it. So it's a very useful thing to have and it works seamlessly across um, uh, different mathematical functions. So with that, let's look at the ND solve framework itself. The framework consists of several functions, uh, the most common and the most used being ND solve, and then it has several cousins. You have ND solve value, parametric ND solve, parametric ND solve value. Um, you have certain functions that can be used with ND solve and these uh, main functions called when events, discrete variables, and you also have a few utility functions uh, that allow you to control the internal data structure that ND solve uses to solve the problem. Uh, I'll try to go through um, uh, these functions uh, th uh, by using a few examples. So the first example that I want to cover is, well, the most common one, which is how do you solve ordinary differential equations in Mathematica? And you'll see that the general syntax in order to solve this, uh, uh, these ODEs is the, as follows. You have ND solve or ND solve value. You get with equations. Now the equations themselves will consist of the actual differential equation and a set of initial conditions to specify the state of the system. You give the number of dependent variables and the independent variable for ODs, it turns out just one independent variable. Okay, so here's a very simple example. You have ND solve. These, the first one is your differential equation. You give it a set of initial conditions, which is for X and X prime, and you give it the dependent variable and the uh, limits of integration, so it's from 0 to 50. So when I solve this, I get the result back, as you can see, in the form of an interpolating function. And this allows, so I can take a derivative of this interpolating function, I can put, I can plug this into um, another function and just use it as just um, another function uh, and can perform lots of analysis on this. So the most common one that you would want to do is basically just plot it. So here's an example based on um, solving the Lorenz equations, which is a typical chaotic dynamical system, uh, wherein you know we have three uh, uh, differential equations, and uh, we want to solve it for a specific set of initial conditions. Um, max steps goes to infinity is an option that we provide that tells ND solve internally to use as many substeps as it needs so that it reaches that specific uh, working precision and the and the accuracy and precision goal. You can plot this because this is, uh, you can plot the, what is called as the phase space, and you can see you get this beautiful butterfly pattern, um, at the, which is reminiscent of, uh, reminiscent of uh, the Lorentz uh, equations. You can, because of the simplicity with which ND solve works as a super function, you can basically take this and do some uh, uh, analysis, and here's a visual analysis which basically looks at the sensitive dependence to initial conditions. So I'm going to solve the same problem, but now I'm going to change the initial condition for y um, from, uh, such that you get three solutions, one with 1.9 and 1.1. So I'm keeping x and z the same, but the y initial condition changes. So with that, I'm going to get three sets of solutions. So you can see this is the first one, second one, third one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot all of this together 
and uh, see the, how the solution evolves. And you can see that you have three balls, each representing an initial condition. And once it starts moving, eventually it starts off very close to each other, but as time progresses, the balls go um, uh, their own separate ways, which is uh, an indication of um, you know, sensitive dependence to initial conditions. So you can, as you can clearly see, because of the automatic selection method, with just a couple of uh, uh, lines of code, you can basically do um, a lot more analysis. Okay, so next we'll uh, talk about partial differential equations. With partial differential equations, again, the syntax is relatively the same. You have nd solved, you have equations, you have initial conditions and boundary conditions now which become part of the system. Variables, you give it the uh, dependent and the independent uh, variable along with the limits of integration in each one of those directions. Um, partial differential equation, obviously, then you need to give it more uh, information. The way, here's a simple example. This is uh, just a simple transient diffusion equation. So you're giving nd solve. Now the dependent variable u, which is what we want to find the solution from, uh, consists of two independent variables, t and x. And so this is, d is uh, basically takes the derivative of whatever function you have with respect to time, which is equal to the uh, second derivative in space. And because uh, uh, you have second derivative in space, you need to give two boundary conditions and one initial condition. So the initial condition uh, is specified by setting t equal to zero over here. And so that's set equal to zero. And uh, you have two boundary conditions, which basically say that the left boundary uh, is going to have a value of sine of t, the right boundary is a value of zero. And you give a uh, dependent variable and you give your limits of integration for both t and x. Okay, so you go ahead and solve that, and it works exactly as, you, as it works with partial differential equation, and which is why I keep emphasizing that this is, uh, ndsolve is basically a super function, and uh, a lot of automation goes inside ndsolve in, um, in order to pick the appropriate algorithm in order to solve the system. And of course, you can now plot this, and you can see um, how the system uh, works. Okay, so this is partial differential equation. I'll, I'll move on with some more examples. There are many more interesting examples, so I may have to skip a few. So let's go now to hybrid systems. Um, with hybrid systems, uh, we now introduce one more function called uh, when event, which uh, I sort of introduced uh, in the second slide when I was talking about the different functions that NDSolve framework contains. So in this case, uh, when event ba literally allows you to change the direction of the solution based on a certain predicate and a certain action. Okay, everything else remains the same in terms of the syntax. You have nd solve, you give it the equations, the initial conditions, uh, but the only thing you now add is what is called as a when event. And it's pretty intuitive in terms of when, when something happens, perform a certain action. So the most, um, uh, the standard example we like to use is the so-called bouncing ball example, wherein you drop a ball, from a certain height and you watch it bounce um, as, it, uh, as it goes uh, over a flat plane. The way you control the bounce back as it hits the plane is you basically say that whenever uh, the ball hits the ground, which is a y of t equal to zero, by the way, y uh, indicates the trajectory of the ball. So whenever the ball hits the ground, which is y of t equal to zero, reverse the direction of the velocity and decrease uh, the velocity value by a certain amount so that you also have this realistic damping effect. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve this, okay? And you look at the plot and there you have it. Now, of course, you can make this arbitrarily complex by setting in all sorts of bells and whistles in order to you know, um, uh, overcome the so-called Zeno effect so that the ball doesn't go bouncing infinite number of times and then, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So here's an example, again, from the field of dynamical systems, where uh, you might be interested in looking at the, what is called as the Poincaré section of uh, a certain differential equation. And in this case, the event that we put it together is whenever uh, the time crosses some kind of, a, some multiple of two pi, we want to extract the x and the x prime uh, uh, solution at th those instances. And we're going to let it run for a really, really long time. As you can see, we're letting it go from zero to 100,000. And after the solution is done, you can see that you get this beautiful Poincaré section coming out from it. All right. 
So now we will move to parametric differential equations, which is um, uh, another uh, uh, way of uh, addressing a broader class of problems, which is how do you um, uh, how do you deal with differential equations wherein you have a parameter embedded inside the differential equation, and you are interested in uh, modifying this parameter and looking at how the solution behaves. The most common example uh, or the place where uh, parametric differential equations are used would be uh, you have a bunch of data which you might have acquired from an, from an experiment and you want to fit perhaps a differential equation through it. How do you do that? Well, with parametric and solve it becomes, uh, it becomes very, very easy to do it. So the, the syntax essentially remains uh, identical to um, or rather same to the original ND-solve uh, syntax, but with uh, just one addition. So you have parametric ND-solve as the function name. You give it all the equations. You give it the dependent variables. You give it the independent variables. And finally, you give it an additional uh, set of parameters. These are the free parameters that you that will take certain numerical values and, uh, and then from there extract uh, the actual solution. So here's a simple example. You use parametric and you solve, you have um, a second order differential equation, wherein you give initial condition for x, which is set equal to 1, but x prime is taken to be this free parameter. So you have, then you give it the dependent, independent variables, and now you say that parametric and you solve, please take this variable s as an open parameter. When you go ahead and solve this, the result is not the form of an interpolating function, but rather a parametric function. And this parametric function takes whatever arguments uh, were specified in, uh, in PARS, okay? So in this case, since it, it's supposed to take only one parameter, when I say x, uh, give me the, uh, the, the numerical solution of this differential equation, when s it takes on a value of 1.5, you see that for that specific s value, you get an interpolating function back. Okay, and so of course you can take that and you can go ahead and plot it. Now the advantage over here is there's a lot of caching going on behind the scenes, so that you know uh, you can uh, you can modify the parameters and it and it'll uh, very efficiently calculate the solution for different parameters. So for for example, I can change this from 1.5 to 5, and there you go. It happens very very fast. Okay, now, supposing so you, because this again has the same concept of just treat it as a black box function. You can take this parametric function and say, ask the question: Well, what what kind of a solution can I expect when I specify that the solution I want at the end of the integration x equal to ten? I want it to be zero. So give me the parameter that will give me this condition. And you can set this up inside a find root, uh, uh, which is uh, you know one of the optimization functions. And it tells you that for a value of 1.40296, so let's put that back in here, 1.40296. Of course, there are more digits here, but for now, we'll just take that. You can see at x equal to 10, it goes very close to 0. So here is one example that we have where we are going to fit parameter uh, to data. Okay, so here is uh, synthetic data that I, I made up. Okay, and I'm going to plot this and uh, hopefully you can see that it's got a bunch of dots, but there's a definite trend and a structure to it. Now the objective for me is to fit a differential equation uh, that passes through this, or, or rather is representative of the, of the experimental data points that I have. Um, so I'm going to choose a differential equation of this form. So I have y double prime equal to negative y, uh, y times this w. And of course, I don't know what the initial conditions have to be, so I'll keep those also as my parameters. So what we're going to now use parametric and solve is to find the value of w, a, and b. So the first thing we do is we set up the problem. We use parametric and solve y double prime equal to negative y, w times y of t. Give it the initial conditions, dependent variables, independent variables, and we now have three parameters, w, a, and b. When we get the result, I'll uh, remove the semicolon so you can see the result. You get a parametric function similar to what we had before. Now what we will do is we'll take this function, put this inside a find fit and see what solution we can get that will minimize the data. I have already pre-computed it, but it takes just a, less than a second to compute it already. And you can see for these values, you can, uh, it seems to be a good fit for the, uh, for the experimental data points. And you can plug these values back in 
and you can see uh, when you plot them along with the data, you can see that it's a pretty decent uh, thing to do. I would like to emphasize, and this is quite important, that, that th these kind of problems are typically non-trivial, but with the with the, uh, with this entire encapsulation inside of IndieSolve framework, we are able to perform these kind of analysis in just two or three lines of uh, IndieSolve code, which is very very critical. And you can expand on the system to make your system as more as um, complicated as you want or as simple as you want. Okay. Um, with that, I want to now quickly talk about resources. Now, obviously, I, have, I haven't really covered, I've just scratched the surface of the IndieSolve framework. There is so much that can be done, but because of the time constraint, I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to, have to move on. So differential algebraic equations was, um, was one area. I'll quickly go over it. It works exactly like IndieSolve, um, but differential e algebraic equations are a special breed in itself in that uh, they require a lot more analysis. So the two options that you'll get is that you, you can uh, solve uh, DAEs or you just give it as a regular ND-solve or you give it ND-solve and you have to add this special method where which says index reduction goes to automatic. Uh, I won't be able to go through the example, but I will uh, tell you where to look for a lot more information. There are three uh, references which I, I would like to point you to. Well, go to the ND-solve reference page. There, is a, there are a number of tutorials associated with NDSolve that details just about every single thing, including some of the internal algorithms that we use uh, to solve various kinds of problems. Okay, uh, with this, I'd like to conclude my talk. Uh, thank you, Dan, and uh, back to you. Excellent, thank you, Paratosh. And uh, just one quick question that we've uh, gotten from a few people already um, is how do you tell NDSolve to use a specific integration method? Right, so that's a, that's a very uh, good question. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just take I hope everybody can see this. I'll take uh, something rather trivial. I'll say x of zero equal to one, um, x being my dependent, from t being my independent. And now I want to solve it using um, uh, an explicit runge kutta method. So I'll say time integration goes to explicit runge kutta. And that's pretty much it. Go ahead, it solves it. So using this option, uh, and of course you can change this, we have uh, various canned routines, and if you are a little bit more um, uh, hands-on, you can develop your own integration method and uh, plug that inside uh, NDSolve. Uh, we, have, we offer a great amount of flexibility to, for user to put their own uh, integration solver if they want. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you, Paratash. Sure, my pleasure. And for more information about everything that Paratash just talked about, including those reference links that he just gave, you can visit reference.wolfram.com, and there's a lot of great material there.